Today I'm going to talk about iReal Pro and how to program up a track. Now you can go to the forums at the bottom here, if you go to forums and uh, you can look on the Google search if you want any particular tune, you can you know, you know, download the chords for living on a prayer if you like. Now it started really as a jazz sort of backing tracks thing. Uh, really it's called the iReal Pro because of the real book which had all the jazz standards in but it doesn't stop there. You can put anything you want in here and the styles that we have they keep releasing new ones so there's lots of jazz ones of course lots of Latin ones but you've got some pop ones and I've also downloaded the blues uh, backing track uh, style pack. There's masses. Basically, anything you want is there, really. So if I now um, go to the pencil tool at the top right, I'm going to write a tune in. Uh, now, it's a pretty good word processor in here. And assuming you get your chords right, then we're in business. Now, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to change the minor symbol to M. Because actually, for rock and pop musicians, M is more common parlance than a minus, which is the jazz way of doing it. So I'm going to go to new song. There we go. And now I'm faced with five choices. The second one, 32 measures A, A, B, A, is a jazz thing. That's a, a, lots of jazz standards work in that sort of uh, in that way. Uh, we've got ABAC as well if you've just got a different ending and then 48 measures, 96 measures. Now I'm going to go blank here. I'm going to go and start a blank song because this is where you need to put your bars in and basically you need to do things sort of you know from the ground up. So I'm going to I'm going to create an exercise in here which is rising minor third. So I'm going to have A minor for a bar, two bars, say, and then C minor, two bars, E flat minor, two bars, F sharp minor, two bars, and coming back round to A. So I'm going to just tap this in. I've got a cursor here, which is basically on beat one. It's assuming that you have a, something in 4-4 four, four time, and I'll discuss the, the different time signatures in a minute, but let's stick with a 4-4, four, four. A, M, 7. There we go. There's my chord, but I'm still on beat one there. I have to click the next button here to go to beat two, beat three, beat four. Now, if I go to beat five, I then have to use the bar line here, the bottom left, to create a bar line just behind where the cursor is. That means that I've got four beats of A minor seven. So I'm going to basically have the same bar again, which is this symbol here. So I have to make sure beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four, beat five, bar line. There we go. Now that symbol, although it's not in the middle, it doesn't really matter. You can position it where you like. That symbol will simply say, play the next bar, play the previous bar again. So I'm gonna go C minor seven now. Uh, next, that's beat two, beat three, beat four, beat five, and a bar line. So beat five has now become beat one of the next bar. So I could put this next bar, uh, keep the same bar again on the second beat, which does put it in the middle. So next bar, and then I've put a bar line in. So we've got two chords there across four bars. So E flat minor seven. Next, 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 next. And there's my uh, next bar, which is kept before. Now, if I wanted to change the positioning of that, I could do this by just hovering over beat one, and then in the, the little bar here is basically what you type. So I could get rid of that, go to the next bar and put that symbol there instead. And it just makes it look a bit nicer. So uh, F sharp minor seven. There we go, that's another minor third up and a bar line. And now I'm going to go A minor seven. I'm gonna do rising major thirds this time. So this is kind of a real random um, sort of improvising scale. So once you've done this a few times, you really, really get used to the whole um, oh, C sharp minor seven. Now all of these other terms here, you've got, notice there's no eight. 
in here. You've got everything but an eight and a zero, although that's the diminished symbol, that's small, small O there. Because generally speaking, well, eight is an octave, so you wouldn't have that because it's endemic in music. So C sharp minus seven, let's go on a bit further and then put another bar there. And then I'm gonna go up a major third from C sharp, which is E sharp, or mm, I'm gonna put F minor seven. E sharp would be okay though, you could do that. You could put it in and it recognizes it. Um, and then um, I'm gonna go back to A minor seven. But this time I'm gonna put a different thing in the final bar, E seven flat nine. Now, notice the, the blue there. That is basically saying you haven't typed in anything valid yet. So if I add the 9, it suddenly it turns black, which means that you've got everything in place. So now I've done that, I'm going to click Done, Save, and now it gives you New song one. Now you can, of course, you can go back in and edit and do the title. I'm not gonna do that now. I'm gonna go pencil and edit. And then the information, the little I symbol here, gives you the info. So I'm gonna go rising, oh, sorry, A, B, C, rising, minor, and major thirds. Real catchy title. But, you know, it's just to sit and improvise with. Composer. I know you don't have to put all this stuff in, but it does help if you're trying to collate all your stuff. And then I'm gonna change it to um, a, a sort of a fast blues, maybe. Um, I can do this afterwards, actually, because the, um, the style um, is, uh, essentially you can save that when you've clicked done and you have your um, you have your tune in position here you can then change there we go blues Chicago shuffle uh, I'm gonna have uh, 120 there we go so Yeah, I mean, it's real catchy stuff at the moment. Now notice it went straight to the A minor seven because I didn't put that symbol in the end of that fourth bar. Now, if it, I'm gonna put something in that's not valid now as well. I'm gonna put F sharp um, uh, flat five. There we go. It doesn't like it, but it'll still allow me to save it. Now, when I put this, when I try to play this now, it'll give me a message. There we go. The chord F sharp flat five in measure eight cannot be played unrecognized chord quality. Let's see what happens. It is intelligent enough though to go, well, I've got to play something. So it just gives me the F sharp. In fact, it just gave me an F sharp with a perfect fifth. So I'm gonna go and edit that now. And I'm going to get rid of the F sharp flat five. I'm just going to put that repeat bar there. Now, there is my completed thing now there. There we go, save. Now, let's just say I wanted to now edit this and do a different time signature. Yeah, okay. Now, we've got the main chord page where you enter your actual notes and your chord quality, F sharp minor seven or whatever it is. At the bottom, we've got symbols, which then gives you all of your time signatures. And it also gives you all sorts of things like double bar lines or first time bar repeats, uh, repeat marks, and all these different time signatures. So I'm gonna put five, four at the beginning and then click save. There we go. And that's just going to put it in five for me. Two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five, and one. Two, three, four, five, and one. Two, three, four, five, and one. 
very, very convenient and extremely easy to do. You can even change the time signature halfway through. So if I go to this bar now, uh, go to symbols and then 4-4, four, four, it will then play that for me. So done, save. So it'll count to five initially, but then go into four. Okay, and there it is, there it is. It gives you that sort of chord, it gives you all of the, the chords and it also changes the time for you. Now, I could, if I go into the edit window again, I'm gonna put in repeat marks, repeat marks now. I want the first line to be repeated. So, making sure the cursor's at bar one, beat one, I'm gonna put a repeat symbol there and then going to the last bar, the last beat of the top line there, I'm going to put a repeat mark in there and that's it again we're done so it'll then repeat those bars for you and you can select things like the cursor color to show you where you are in the chord sequence and especially if you're changing time all the time uh, you know if it goes four four into three eight and all this it's going to start getting quite complicated but this is you know, this is an exercise. This isn't exactly catchy. It's not going to appear on the radio anytime soon. So if I go back into the edit window now, I can put more than one chord in a bar. So if I go to beat three, I can go E7 flat nine. That's fine. That means that the repeating bar that I've put in, that second bar, is going to play that bar again. So... Notice that it also put the that term rather intelligently for the sort of jazz up jazzers. The 5 4 time, it put the E7 flat 9 for two of the beats. So it had three beats of A minor, two beats of E minor, E7 flat 9. Now, of course, because I've edited this in four. That's kind of assumed that that's going that, that it's going to sort of do its own thing really. But if I wanted to change that bar, I'm going to there we go. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to put this on the second beat now. E7 flat 9. Save. Don't worry about the fact that the letters cross over. That's just one of those things. You can format it a bit differently. And of course, because it's 5-4, it's going to create a little bit of an issue for me. So this time when I play it, you'll hear the timing is going to be different. Now this time it put two beats of A minor and three beats of E7 flat nine. Now, of course, if I'd written this in five originally, I could have a chord on every beat if I wanted. And that's, that's absolutely fine. Now, um, if I just go, just show you a couple of other things in here. So looking at the, um, the chord of C minor seven, let's say I wanted to specify a different bass note. That's what this symbol here, the forward slash is. If I go C minor seven over E flat, there we go. That's like a, uh, a fairly pretty valid chord because E flat is one of the notes in C minor seven. It's now going to put my bass, it's going to play an E flat in the bass. I'm not going to bother playing that now, just to show you that that can, that can be done. So going back to have a look at here. We've got all the other sort of chord qualities, alt to add, altered chord, add for add nine or add six or add whatever you like. Um, now we've got here in the bar, in the, the bottom left here, we've got some alternative chords. Now this is usually mooted in the sort of the jazz real book as a, as a, a sort of a way of playing a tune a bit differently. I could do this, E11, um, oh, E11, next, um, F major 7. Now this is just something that uh, sometimes if you're reading this, 
sometimes you can get these uh, these extra chords here and actually it won't play them but it's just a, a sort of a notational thing where you can sort of see what the alternative chords might be if it was the Randy Crawford version of rising minor and major thirds instead of the Otis Redding one so if I just go now to uh, have a look at a couple of other things if I go symbols again we can obviously we've got the time signature here now the first time repeat. This is only good, of course, if you've got your repeat marks in place. There we go. So now I'm going to carry on writing here. So F minor seven is going to play two bars and then it's going to do that. And then it's going to go back to my F minor seven. And I want to ba basically have uh, two chords of E seven. And then a double bar. Well, bar doesn't matter which so that means that my second time bar is going to be this now if I go back to here and go back to symbols I've got the one appearing again which isn't exactly ideal but it basically says that you've got a second time uh, repeat bar if you press it twice you get your second time bar there we go so that means now it's going to play all my repeat marks. Now you can th do things like adding DSL coders and you input them in exactly the same way. So there it is. There's my magnum opus that's unplayable and unlistenable. And I hope you've enjoyed that. Check out my channel for loads of other things, including GarageBand and lots of tunes.